A perfect day in Iowa City for a perfect team. Yet the Iowa faithful seemingly the only ones buying the Hawkeye hype. Some call them overrated. Others lucky, blessed, and now jinxed. Call Iowa what you will. The most appropriate moniker is unbeaten. The 9-0 Hawkeyes take on Northwestern next. This is ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. The Iowa Hawkeyes shoot for a 10-0 record while keeping Big Ten, and depending on who you ask, national championship dreams alive against the Northwestern Wildcats. Dave Pash alongside Bob Greasy. Iowa controls its own destiny in the Big Ten. A big game at Ohio State next week. The Buckeyes are at Penn State today. Iowa also has Minnesota here in Iowa City on the schedule. Iowa fourth in the BCS standings each week has been unpredictable wins at Penn State and Wisconsin but some narrow escapes at home including last week against Indiana on the opening kickoff Johnson Kulianos takes it across the 20 and out near the 24 so Iowa will start with a football no one embodies Iowa's unpredictability more than that guy, their quarterback, Ricky Stancy. He's been very un inconsistent, and as the Iowa football team has been up and down to the level of the competition, they're very unpredictable, but they come out with a win. They're 9-0, and and nobody can take that away from them. Stancy last week against Indiana had four interceptions in the third quarter, then bounced back with two touchdowns in the fourth in a 28-point final frame to beat the Hoosiers. Iowa will operate from its 23. Stanzi trying to dump it off to Morse, and it is incomplete on first down. Iowa starting offense at the top of your screen. Hawkeyes are ninth in the Big Ten in total offense and near the bottom in turnovers, yet an undefeated record. They're a little bit better throwing the ball than they are at running. They've had some running backs injured this year. Jewel Hampton was the first. Adam Robinson was the second. Now the true freshman, Wager, gets the call to run the football. Just his second start. Had over 100 yards and three scores last week in his first start. And he'll get it here on second down. Across the 25 and out to the 26 for three yards. Nate Williams, the middle linebacker, made the tackle. And the starting defensive players for Northwestern at the top of your screen. This defense, this defense ranks about in the middle as you take a look at Pat Fitzgerald. It's his fourth year at the school. He's done a nice job. Last year was nine and four. Bowl game almost beat a tough Missouri team. Third down and seven for Stanzi. Going deep. Well, McNutt last week had the go ahead touchdown, a 92 yard reception. This one goes for 74 yards. He also had the game-winning touchdown on fourth down at Michigan State. Seven nothing Iowa, one minute in. So much for a slow start for Stanzi at the top left of your screen, number seven. That's McNutt. There was nobody in the center of the field. Stanzi wrote it, read it very nicely. Nice completion. For the touchdown, big plays the last two quarters, this quarter and then last week against Indiana. McNutt, as you mentioned, had one of the big ones. And Stanzi's problem last week was under throwing those deep balls. Had a couple of interceptions <laughs> trying to throw the deep ball, but that one yeah. was on the money. Yeah. Last week, the wind was blowing left to right about 30 miles an hour more than it is here today. He didn't have any problem with that one. 
And the former quarterback, Marvin McNutt, now leading the team in touchdown catches with five. has won 13 straight that's the nation's second longest win streak behind Florida the Gators have won 18 in a row they play Vanderbilt tonight Stephen Simmons on the return for Northwestern and he gets thrown down to the 26 yard line by Bruce Davis our impact players brought to you by Jared the Galleria of Jewelry the leading passer and rusher when healthy he is magic Mike Kafka Markshausen, this is a ex-walk-on who leads the Big Ten in receptions. He'll be their big playmaker today and a preseason All-American. This kid can dominate. And Northwestern has done just that here in Iowa City, winning the last two meetings. The only team in the last seven years to win twice at Kinnick Stadium. And Kafka battling a hamstring injury, suffered against Penn State last week, throws incomplete, trying for Sidney Stewart. And if you have not seen no Northwestern play, they use a no huddle, hurry up, high tempo style of offense. Kafka, as you mentioned, was injured in last week's game against Penn State in the second quarter, went out of the game, did not come back, is back today. The thing that helps him a lot is being in the shotgun. He doesn't have to take the snap under center. This time throws a strike to Sidney Stewart to the 32, so he got about six. Sean Prater on the coverage. Kafka leads the Big Ten in passing and total offense, so he is a difference maker if he can play the entire game. He also leads him in the percentage passing, fewest percentage interceptions. He leads him in a lot of different categories. This kid can play. converted on its third down ended up with a touchdown let's see what the Wildcats do on third and fourth Kafka gonna get lit up Christian Ballard broke through unfortunately when you have a leg injury you're probably going to be a sitting duck back there in the pocket not able to move around but that time Ballard just busted through between the guard in the center Burkett and Bartles Northwestern will have to punt the ball. Iowa is down to its third string punt returners with a couple of guys out due to injury. Demos with the rugby style kick. And it goes out of bounds around the 37 yard line. Great start for Iowa, converting a third down and getting a touchdown and then bouncing back with a three and out on defense. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. A three and out for Mike Kafka and the Northwestern offense. And now Iowa with its second possession from the Hawkeye 37 leading 7-0. A 74-yard touchdown pass by Ricky Stanzi to Marvin McNutt. And Wager with a huge hole to run through on first down. Picks up 11. They pass Bob Greasy and be interesting to see how Iowa plays with a lead Bob. They are used to being behind. In fact, they trailed in every game but one this year. Yeah, but this is Northwestern. Northwestern has beaten these guys three of the last four times and the last two times here at Iowa. So I don't think you're going to get any slowing down from the Iowa Hawkeyes. And Northwestern, on the other hand, has been ahead in every game this year in the second half. Yet the Wildcats have lost four games. Play fake for Stanzi and finds a wide open man downfield. Trey Strauss inside the 25 to the 22. It's a good call by offensive coordinator Ken O'Keefe. Rolling the quarterback out gives you more time to allow a receiver to make a double move and get all the way across the field and get open. This was very similar to some of the plays they hit on last week in the fourth quarter when they came from behind. Get him outside the pocket, crossing routes, need a little bit more time, and you get it that way. Play Wager. 
Can't get outside. The corner, Jordan Maben comes up and makes the play. Our impact players for Iowa. Brought to you by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Well, Stanzi has been inconsistent, but 17 and 3 as a starter. He just wins, baby. Wager, the true freshman, has inherited the running back position. He needs a solid game to keep that running game going. And Claiborne, he's one of the leaders of that stingy Hawkeye defense. And had a punt return for a touchdown to help Iowa knock off Penn State earlier this year. The Nittany Lions struggled against this Northwestern defense last week. That game was tied going into the fourth quarter. But Iowa moving the ball easily so far on Northwestern. Here's a pitch to Wager, and they fake the end around. And Wager taken down for no gain. Good play by David Arnold and Sherrick McManus, who is back after missing the Penn State game with a leg injury. He's one of their top defensive backs. It looks like on second thought that Wager should have given the ball to the reverse guy because all the white jerseys were running away from where the reverse would have run. You know, you always, you know, when you call those plays and you say, should I have given it to him? Should I not? You know, if, if you give it to him, then he gets lost for five yards. If you give it to him the other way, so you never know. That play lost two yards, so big third down and ten for Pat Fitzgerald's defense. Stanzi with time going end zone overthrown trying for Johnson Koulianos and Iowa will have to settle for a field goal try. Well that's if you're going to miss that's a great place to miss and not throwing it to one of the white jerseys to one of the opponents. Johnson Koulianos on the outside going to come down make a double move to the inside and then back to the outside. Little contact there but in college football you can touch him downfield as long as the ball is not in the air. 39 yard attempt by Daniel Murray. And it's 10 nothing Iowa. Kirk Ferentz and the Hawkeyes trying to get to 10 and 0. They're off to a great start. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. And in part by Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. That train literally comes right behind Kinnick Stadium and just next to our TV trucks and the Hawkeye fans on we got here about 8.15 local time, about three hours before kick. And it was packed with RVs and tailgaters. They know they got something special going here. A school record 9-0 start and a 10-0 lead against Northwestern. Here's Stephen Simmons. And he gets brought down at the 27 as we say hello to Reese Davis. You have five minutes gone. And Reese, Michigan's lone Big Ten win was against Indiana this year. Here's Scott Concan in the running back. And it gets good yardage on first down. Broderick pins on the stop after a gain of about five. It was a little option, but Iowa is, certainly knows that Kafka is not going to run the football. He's got that, that, little, that slightly pulled hamstring, and he is not going to try to damage himself. He wants to sit back in that pocket and be a thrower. And Kafka to the air here underneath to the nation's second leading receiver, Zeke Markshausen. There is a flag down. And it looks like it's going to be on the Wildcats. Pass interference, number nine, offense. That's a 15 yard penalty. We'll repeat, first down. It's on Drake Dunsmore. Well, tonight on ABC. And Persa is in the ball game, the backup quarterback. That's a killer penalty, Dave. We went from first down to second and 15 or 20. And they are going to have Persa roll out. He's not much of a passer, but is very athletic. Iowa does a good job there. Amari Spave in athletic corner. Made the play. Third down and long. Persa was, a few years ago, was the player of the year in the state of Pennsylvania. They got some pretty good football out in that state, so I'm impressed 
with his credentials. We just need to see him play, and we saw him play a little bit last week, but he's a better runner at this stage of his career than he is a thrower. Northwestern, one of the nation's leaders in third down conversions, but they're now 0 for 2 as that pass gets away from Kafka intended downfield for Stewart. But there's a penalty flag in the backfield thrown at the feet of Adrian Claiborne. He knows he's guilty. The hit looked light and it also looked like it was to the head. From over here, he's going to come number 94. I think it's more the head to head. Yeah. Did he get him with the head, though? Yeah, it's I really look, hard to tell. It looked like helmet to helmet to me. These officials, that is probably the hardest thing to call now with that emphasis on helmet to helmet kicks and launch or hits and launching yourself into a player, trying to determine whether. In a split second, there's helmet to helmet or not. Bursa in the game, and he gets a block. Spins out of one tackle, and gets about four yards. Joe Conklin made the stop. Let's take a look again at that roughing the passer call. I don't think there was any problem with the hit, in the timing of the hit, but just the helmet to helmet part is what he got called for. Big hole for Persa. He finds it and into Iowa territory. It's a first down for the Wildcats. That may be the spark that the Wildcats needed because if, if it were not for that penalty, they would have had to punt the ball away. They pick up 11 and they get up there quickly to run the next play. And Persa will run again. This offense has given Iowa all kinds of trouble the last five years. As Persa picks up nine, Northwestern has won its last two trips to Kinnick Stadium. Kafka was the backup on those teams behind C.J. Bechet. Kafka back in there now as Persa goes to the bench. Well, they're up there ready to run them again. They lead the Big Ten in the number of plays run per game. Simmons has the first down for Northwestern. Pat Fitzgerald told us the only way we can win this week is to move the chains. We've got to stay ahead of the chains, not get in third down and long. And that's what this offense does. It's a lot of, it's a spread. It's a one sideline to the other. When that, when you do that offensively, you spread the defense out. And then you just, it's a lot of short passing. It's a short passing game, a West Coast type of thing, quick outs, slants, not a lot of deep throws. And Kafka looking downfield. There was contact. That pass was way out of bounds. It was intended for Jeremy Ebert. And Amari Spave had coverage. And you look at uh, how many plays they run a game, 78. That is sixth most of the country. They lead the Big Ten in first downs. Northwestern with a win today would get bowl eligible. You talked about what they did last year. Nine wins a year ago. And Kafka has time. And he's got Markshausen who breaks a tackle and still will come up short of the first down. Sean Prater made the stop, but it will be third down at about two. Talk about a great story. How about Zeke Markshausen? Yeah. It was a transfer into the program, was a walk-on, didn't catch a pass, caught one pass last year before this year, came into the game with 67 receptions. Just great work attitude, great attitude overall. And Pat, guys, Pat said he wished he had all, all of his guys were like uh, his attitude. Guys averaging 10 catches a game in Big Ten play. Kafka. Everybody covered here. Kafka in trouble. Down he goes. Back at the 40 for a loss of eight. Sacked by Broderick Vins and Carl Kluge. If you had seen Kafka play before, you would know that he could have gotten away from those guys. But with a hamstring injury, he is a sitting duck. He slides a little bit. Yeah, he just, he's going to be limited. No question about it. And yeah, that hurts because that pushes him out of field goal range. Stefan Demos, who is also the punter, is an excellent field goal kicker. 
But because of the loss, it'd be about a 40 or 56 yard attempt. So Demos will try to pin the Hawkeyes deep. And he does. Fair caught by Sash at the 10 yard line. Can the Hawkeyes keep it going and stay undefeated? They've got a 10 0 lead in the first. Iowa's offense picking up where it left off in the fourth quarter of last week's come from behind miracle against Indiana when the Hawkeyes outscored Indiana 28 nothing in the fourth after Ricky Stanzi threw four third quarter interceptions. Stanzi has a touchdown pass already in this game after two in the fourth quarter last week. Hawkeyes have to start this drive at their 10 Here's Pocky O'Mara. And he gets tagged at the 14-yard line. Let's take a look back at that great game between Iowa and Indiana a week ago. Number four, Hawkeyes down by 14 points. It's loose. Iowa on the move. Trick or treat. Iowa City. Marvin McNutt making a house call. Johnson Pulianos, do you believe it? Laker touchdown. A huge and plausible comeback by the Iowa Hawkeyes. And Kirk Ferentz told us when we met with him yesterday, hey, we are not an elite team. We are who we are. He said we were not the first pick to anybody's prom, and that goes for players and coaches. O'Mara gets stuck for a loss on the play as we check in with Reese. All right, Reese, here it's 10-0 Iowa. The Hawkeyes face with a third down and six from their 14. One third down conversion was a 74 yard touchdown pass by Stanzi to McNutt. And Stanzi's got a man again for another Hawkeye first down. It's Johnson Kulianos. You never know what you're going to get with Stanzi. Depends on the quarter. Here was last week against Indiana. We talked about the four picks in the third. And then the two touchdowns in the fourth. And there's no question that 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 big come from behind wind after being down so much in the third quarter talking about Stanzi can boost a guy's confidence and carry over to the next week and we're seeing it here today. O'Mara on the run trying to get to the outside he can't good play by David Arnold. You know, last week talking about that Indiana, they were down 14 and they won by 18. So that was like a 32 point surge that Sash's interception really got it yeah. started. And then the two offensive big plays, and it was, it's just, you know, uh, Kirk, Kirk knows that uh, you can't keep, well, they had six turnovers and they still won the game. And still scored 42 points. Yes. With six turnovers. Uh, six turnovers and a shanked punt. He'll tell us. <laughs> uh, you know, he, he, that's like playing with fire. You know, you'll get burned yep. if you keep doing that. Well, Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator, said to Stanzi, I've never coached a guy who had four picks. And Stanzi said, Coach, I had five. <laughs> Here's a screen. Wager got the first down out across the 45. Well, we talked with Kirk Ferentz about the perseverance of Ricky Stanzi yesterday. He's got tremendous resolve and tremendous faith in himself, I think, and certainly everybody supported him. But, uh, you know, it's just amazing with the, the way he persevered, stuck with it. Again, I know he had to be rattled inside. You know, he's human, like all of us, but, uh, you know, he just kept playing and, and uh, really helped our football team come out of a very dire situation. I go back to what we said a little earlier. He's 17 and 3 as a starter. Mm. And 10 and 1 here at home. Since taking over for Jake Christensen, who transferred to Eastern Illinois, Christensen actually expected to be in the stands today for this game. And Stanzi looking deep here for McNutt. And he overthrew him that time inside the 10. Sherrick McManus had covered. Bob, didn't you have a five interception game at one point in your career? <laughs> yes, I did. But you bounced back from it, it obviously. A, uh, I'll, never, I'll, I'll never forget it. Look at the receiver up here. Go to run down the field. Stanzi has got plenty of time. If he needs to throw it more to the center, he threw it down the field. But yeah, I threw five against Illinois my senior year. We came back and won the game. And, uh, but, you know, the Heisman Trophy, I was in the battle with Steve Spurrier at yep. the time. I just waved bye bye to that baby. <laughs> well, he still finished second, though, Spurrier in 1966, as there's a big hole for Wager. And 
and it gets closed quickly by Brad Phillips. But into Northwestern territory. And then and then in the pros I threw I had a couple of games where I think I I try not to remember the bad ones. But I think it's a long I time threw, ago it's hard to remember. It is it is. Uh, I, I knew I threw four maybe a couple of times but you try not to remember and you, you still have to play the rest of the game so you have to say all right now I've done all the bad stuff let me go out and get some good stuff in and that's that's what Stanzi has done yeah. at a very young age. And Farron said I'm sticking with him he said at no point yeah. during last week was I even thinking about replacing Stanzi even after the fifth interception of the game. Here's Stanzi on third down trying to make another play looking downfield again and that pass just out of the outstretched arms of Johnson Culliano said a little bit too much on that one and Iowa will have to punt. He's gotten great pass protection Threw the ball down the field. The good thing again is it wasn't intercepted. The other team doesn't get the ball. You know Iowa is a big second half team. They've come out ready to play here against the, the Wildcats. Ryan Donahue who is Mel Kuyper's number one junior punter. In case you're interested in uh, how NFL teams think about punters for two years down the road. Kicking to Brewer who is the fair catch guy for Northwestern but he let that one go. And it works out well for Iowa pinned at the 10 yard line will be the Wildcat offense. Not only a Heisman Trophy winner now Kinnick but Kinnick also died in service during World War II at the age of 24. One of the youngest probably the youngest in the history of sports to have a stadium named after him. Considering he passed away just short of his 25th birthday as Dan Persa picks up five on the ground. One of the problems with a hurry up offense is the defense doesn't have time to substitute for those big defensive linemen. They could be out there for seven, eight, ten plays. Persa waiting and good job by Iowa. Eads had the pitch man and there was no way Persa could get rid of it. He takes a seat at the 15. Mike Daniels was chasing him. Norm Parker the defensive coordinator calls Eads the professor. He says he's the smart one. He gets everybody lined up. He's a captain. And he always plays to the field. He's got a tough job. A lot of times out there with the wide receivers hang out. Great first quarter for the Iowa Hawkeyes looking to go to 10-0. They lead 10-0. Dave Pash, Bob Greasy in Iowa City. The Hawkeyes looking to go to 10 and 0 and keep not only their Big Ten championship hopes alive, but perhaps BCS championship hopes alive. We'll get into that a little bit later. As Kafka fires to Markshausen, and it looks like he's going to be short of the first down. Tackled by A.J. Eads. So it's fourth down and Northwestern will have to punt the ball. Yeah that was that was a, a big tackle by Eads to not allow Markshausen to make the first down. Already the third three and out for a team that leads the nation yeah. in the number of third down conversions. They had 75 in nine games coming into today. Sash will return the punt from Demos. Has to shield himself from the sun and Sash knocked down by Simmons. Iowa's offense back on the field with a 10 nothing lead when we return. <laughs> Celebrating its fifth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $1.9 million in scholarship monies. Iowa leading 10 nothing and another offensive possession for the Hawkeyes with good field position. It'll be play fake for Stanzi going deep again and this one underthrown and intercepted. And taken back into Iowa territory. It's picked off by Jordan Mabin. <laughs> This is one of those situations where Stanzi gets back there and he throws it before he looks around. 
Maddox coming from the other side. Maven comes from the other side of the field to pick it off. You know, it may be there in practice, but you have to read it and look at it and see it in the games and, and, and see if it's there. And a lot of times it won't be there. 14th interception on the season by Stanzi, the most in the Big Ten, and among the most thrown by a quarterback in all of college football. Kafka back to work. Con Cannon on first down, pushing the pile about five yards. Pat Anger in there for Iowa. This is just what the Northwestern Wildcats needed. They needed a break. They needed somebody to help jumpstart this offense on the positive side of the field, on, North, on the Iowa side of the field. Con Cannon again finds a hole. And good run. He picked up the first down. Con Cannon, a sophomore who barely played. Last year was injured for most of the season. He's an academic all Big Ten getting a chance to start now. Well, their running game has been by committee. It's about three or four running backs. Here's Simmons. And Claiborne was all over that. Throws him down at the 37. No game. Yeah, Claiborne played that really well when Stan, when uh, when Kafka came at him to run the option, he didn't even think of going for Kafka because he knows he can't run the football. So he had to pitch it. He was right there to make the play. Northwestern got inside the Iowa 35 on its last possession, but then Kafka took a sack, and Northwestern had to punt. Kafka trying to hit Simmons underneath, incomplete. Anger was in coverage. Those Iowa linebackers are so good in space. Well, this, this Iowa defense, coached by Norm Parker, they're not very fancy. They don't do a lot of things. They don't show you a lot of looks. They're pretty vanilla, but they play what they play very well. And they're going to be somebody on a receiver and very close to him, covered him pretty tightly. Norm Parker, the defensive coordinator, had coach from the press box who was hospitalized last week complications of a foot infection more on that story a little bit later is Kafka on third and 11 try to dump it off to Con Cannon couldn't hang on to it and negative plays again hurt Northwestern they're gonna have to punt it that's just not the same when your leader the magic man back there, Kafka, cannot move. A lot of times already in this ball game, he would have run for a first down. But again, a negative play on that drive pushes them out of field goal range. Demos to punt. He pinned Iowa inside the 10 earlier and does it again. The Wildcats down there to get a hold of it. It's Simmons at the six yard line. Iowa pinned deep. We'll see what the Hawkeyes do on offense when we come back. Welcome back to Iowa. A perfect day. Believe it or not, temperature around 70 here in Iowa City. As the Hawkeyes look to stay perfect and keep Big Ten championship hopes, and depending on who you talk to, national title hopes alive. They lead Northwestern 10 0, fourth in the BCS standings, and a first and 10 at their six yard line. Wager on first down, nothing doing. Nate Williams made the hit, and here's Reese Davis. All right, and here, Reese, it is 10 zip. Hawkeyes over Northwestern. Wildcats got what they wanted. They got an interception from Stanzi, but they could not turn it into points. And Stanzi in trouble in the end zone. The ball comes out. And it's recovered for a Northwestern touchdown. Marshall Thomas recovers it. Another Iowa turnover. It just it looks like Stanzi is hurt. Corey Wooten hit him, and the ball came out. Recovered for a touchdown by Marshall Thomas. The backup to Stanzi is a freshman, James Vandenberg, who's thrown only three passes all year. They're looking at the left foot of Stanzi. Well, how we were just talking about the, the good fortunes of Iowa. Big Ten championship, maybe a national championship, and it could all turn around on one play in this end zone. 
But this is the unpredictability that has become predictable for Iowa. You just don't know. A 10-0 lead, a 10-0 deficit, it doesn't matter. Crazy things happen for the Hawkeyes. Wooten with a big hit. And then just bending back down. You got to secure the football. Wooten make a great play. One of our impact players at the beginning of the game knocks it loose. And that's a good sign there, walking off the field. But what does it tell you that last week, even with four interceptions and a quarter, that the Iowa coaches were never thinking about putting Vandenberg in, and now they may have to yeah. at quarterback. And I, you know, I, I wonder about that play too. A, a naked, a, a little naked reverse in your own end zone, where a, at a guy which was a preseason All-American defensive end. Yeah, and a mistake-prone quarterback too. Yeah, exactly. Demos on for the point after. A huge play by the Northwestern defense. Corey Wooten with a forced fumble recovered by Marshall Thomas. Wildcats back in it. Ricky Stanzi, the Iowa quarterback, who has a 17-3 record as a starter, injured on that last play. A fumble that was recovered for a touchdown by Northwestern. Questionable at this point whether Stancy will be back. James Vandenberg, a redshirt freshman quarterback who has thrown just three passes all year, is the number two quarterback. And Johnson Culianos had to shield himself from the sun. He could not see that kick return, but he still turns it into a big play. Out to the 35. You can see the long shadows. And he was looking right back into that sun. Bandit Berger, red shirt in 2008. He was the Class 3A Player of the Year in the state of Iowa as a senior in high school. And he was considered a very highly recruited guy. He's only thrown three passes so far in the first nine games. He completed two of them. But given what's happened to Iowa all year, no one would be surprised if this guy comes out and plays lights out. Along with true freshman running back Brandon Wager, who got the call there and was thrown out of play by Quentin Davey. Now stanzi has got his helmet on. Now walk it off. Boy, I'll tell you, he's, I'm glad to see him up walking around because that probably tells us that nothing's broken and, and, and uh, nothing is torn. Well, again, don't want to speculate at this point about what the injury is or the length. He'll be sidelined. Could be heading back to the locker room. The Iowa locker room is in that direction. Second down and nine. White clock at one. Vandenberg did get the playoff, and here's Wager with a big hole. He gets planted by McManus right at the first down marker. Now it's even more important so on that offensive line, the pressure on the offensive line with Stanzi out of the ball game, that Wager and the running game pick up some of the slack. You don't want to have to put the ball game on this redshirt freshman that just got into the ball game. And Stanzi is headed back to the Iowa locker room. Probably go back and get some x-rays and get a further examined. First down for his backup, Vandenberg, in the Hawkeye offense. Vandenberg with time, and he throws it right to Quentin Davey. Another Iowa turnover, the third by the Hawkeyes here in the first half. So the first pass of the game by Vandenberg is picked off by Quentin Davy. Watch Davy right in here. It's going to be a crossing route. He's going to drop straight back. Right here. Didn't even see him. Never saw him. You can't follow the receiver. You have to look at the fence post, the defensive guys, and throw around them. Here's an end around. 
gain of about five yards to true freshman R.B. Fields. Partner, just a little bit earlier, you were talking about Iowa, 9-0, maybe winning the next three, winning the Big Ten championship, chance at the national championship, and how quickly things have changed. The quarterback goes down in the end zone, fumble for a touchdown for the opposition, another interception by the backup quarterback, and now you're wondering, can Iowa win this? Can they can they overcome the loss of their quarterback? Great run by Ken Cannon, just pinballing off of Iowa defenders to pick up the first down. Well, Kirk Ferentz has seen worse this year in terms of big deficits that the Hawkeyes have overcome, at least in this game, when their quarterback went out, they had the lead. I'm sure some will point to the fact that they're on Sports Illustrated's cover for the first time in 25 years is the reason for the injury to Stanzi as Dunsmore catches that out in the flat and gets a yard. Here's Ricky Stanzi's reaction to the interception thrown by Vandenberg. He knew something was wrong there as he was headed back towards the locker room. Well, you can tell by the reaction of the crowd. If you're home and the crowd goes crazy, you know something good's happening. And if they go, oh, you know, they give it a, one of those sad ones, you know that something not good for your team has happened. There's Person, the game at quarterback, trying to follow his blockers. Oh, he gets tattooed by Tyler Sash at the 29-yard line. Tyler Sash, number nine. He's normally uh, back in the secondary, intercepting passes. He's got six on the year, which leads the Big Ten, but he can also come up and make plays. Look at what Northwestern has done on third down throughout the season with comparison to today, 0 for 4. And Persa to pass. No, he's not. He's got the first down. Well, right there, with, that is what Kafka does not give you. On third downs, Kafka cannot run out of the pocket and pick up a first down. And Purser did that for, for uh, the Wildcats. Now, Kafka, when healthy, can do that, but a left hamstring injury means he's limited for today. Good coverage. Everybody's uh, got a man covering him. Take off and run. Pick up a first down. But this game may come down to the two backup quarterbacks, Persa and Vandenberg. Simmons on first down. Jeremiah Hunter there for Iowa after a gain of three. Second and six for Northwestern. Trying to either tie it or take the lead on this possession after Iowa's third giveaway of the game. Bursa around the edge and downed after maybe two. Pat Anger, the middle linebacker, third leading tackler in the Big Ten, made the stop. Now, the least, least thing you want to do here is, is, is don't turn the ball over, be able to kick a field goal, tie this thing up. Third down and five, Northwestern with only one third down conversion. That was earlier on this drive. And they're playing some music on the Jumbotron here. And I don't know if that's what upset Pat Fitzgerald. Going to take the play clock down to a one and call a timeout. Time out. Northwestern, first charge. Timeout. Oh, so big third down conversion opportunity for Northwestern when we come back. Northwestern in the red zone, looking to tie or take the lead at Iowa, a place they've won in their last two trips here. And Iowa, not good red zone defense this year. Northwestern's touchdown came in a fumble recovery in the end zone off a Stanzi fumble when Iowa's starting quarterback was injured. Then a turnover by Vandenberg, the backup quarterback. And here's Simmons, and he's got the Northwestern first down. First and goal for the Wildcats. Nice call for the sideline. You saw Perso look over, and uh, McCall, the offensive coordinator, saw the defense, called this little run. Huge hole up and inside. Big first down for Northwestern. This is the 21st play Northwestern's run in Iowa territory already in this game. Persa trying to find a hole. 
grabbed from behind by Carl Klug. So a gain of a couple, it'll bring up second and goal. Boy, if Iowa somehow wins this game, it may just be their year with all that they've overcome wait, wait, wait. Just, already. Just a little while ago, they were they were scoring on their first two possessions. They were up 10 points. Northwestern wasn't doing anything offensively. And now you come out and say that? I said if they win. With the backup quarterback. Because they've had three turnovers yep. in the last three possessions. So they had six turnovers last week and one thanks to a 28-point fourth quarter. They don't like to do it the easy way. Here's Purse and a throw. He's got a wide open man. Touchdown, Drake Dunsmore, and Northwestern leads. That's a big throw for the confidence of Dan Person, the backup quarterback who is sharing time. Ran, they had him doubled inside and out. He just ran right through him and got him to the inside. Good throw by Persa. Point after makes it 14-10. Dan Purse's second touchdown pass of the season. And the Wildcats lead in Iowa City. And you know a lot of people out there are going to be wondering about that Sports Illustrated jinx. Here is the cover. Iowa has, after, has had to come from behind in every game but one this year. And they got to do it again as they've given up back-to-back -back scores to Northwestern and now trail by four late in the first half. Iowa has turned it over three times in its last six plays, including that fumble that was recovered for a touchdown. Here's Keenan Davis for Iowa on the short kickoff, and he's tackled shy of the 30 as we say hello once again to Reese. Meanwhile, Northwestern Reese has a four-point lead as Vandenberg throws his first completion of the game since coming on for the injured Ricky Stanzi fighting Johnson Culianos. Our Affleck trivia question, which former Hawkeye holds the NFL career record for most interceptions? I'll give you a hint. It is not a current player. The current leader is Darren Sharper of the New Orleans Saints, and he is nowhere near this guy in terms of career interceptions. It's not Sash, obviously. I played against 11 this guy. picks for Sash. He played against the winner. You yeah. know who it is? Uh, I think I do. Here's Wager. And he's got the first down and might be gone. There's a flag down, though, in the backfield. Wager inside the 10. Touchdown for the moment, Iowa. But the Hawkeye offensive lineman are not celebrating, which for Iowa fans yeah. is not a good sign. And this Iowa team is one of the least penalized teams in the nation. Holy, 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 number 52, offense. That's a 10-yard penalty, previous spot, repeat, second down. That's their center, Rafael Eubanks, who's a very good player. I hear it. I didn't see much there, did you, uh, Dave? Well, he did take him down to the ground. Well, he just he was pushing him down. That's what you talked about there, about third in the country in terms of fewest penalties. Well, that, that one came at a bad time. Vandenberg with time going deep and overshot Davis. So it'll bring up third down and long. Yeah, see, Vandenberg just has not been in enough of these situations to make a good throw like that. You know, he wanted to get rid of it, found out that, hey, I've got enough time. I can hold this a little bit longer. But he just it doesn't have enough experience in the ball games. Bob, take us into James Vandenberg's head as you look at the offensive coordinator, Ken O'Keefe. Here's a quarterback that has thrown three passes all year. Now he's out there for a team that's undefeated, playing perhaps well, for a shot down the road at a, at a championship. You go back to the successes that you had, and that was in high school. He can play. He can play. He's just not up to speed yet. He needs to get some experience, but he can play. Timeout. Iowa. First charge. Timeout. James Vandenberg, redshirt freshman, the guy right now for Iowa with Stansy's injury. 
Iowa may have to rely on freshman quarterback James Vandenberg if the Hawkeyes are going to stay unbeaten. Ricky Stanzi injured earlier. The third quarterback is also a freshman, John Winky. He was a redshirt last year as well as Vandenberg. Here's third down and 12 for Vandenberg. And finds Morse underneath, and the Wildcats all over him, and Iowa will have to punt. But there's a flag down. Sheriff McManus on the tackle. Personal foul. High hit. Number 24. Defense. That's a 15 yard penalty. An automatic. Matt Fitzgerald can't believe the call. Take a look. Wow, they called See, that a well, personal foul on McManus. Well, well, it was it is helmet to helmet. Yeah, but Morris lowered his helmet. I know that. Helmet. I understand that. I understand it, and that's why I have some. I'm an offensive guy having some sympathy for some of these <laughs> defensive guys, because he did lower his helmet, but it was head to head. Now that's something they got to straighten out because I, you know that's not right. Vandenberg with tons of time, and then the pocket collapses. Corey Wooten. Marshall Thomas and Corbin Bryant rather back there for Northwestern. This is a pretty good defense of, of the Wildcats. They've, they've, the last couple of games they had no takeaways at all. Now they come in with three takeaways in the first half. And go back to that hit that was penalized by McManus. We talked about it earlier for officials. That's got to be the hardest thing to call because yeah. sometimes that quickly you've got to determine whether the offensive player lowered his helmet or the defensive player launched. Right. Play clock down to one. Here's Wager. Good patience. And drive out to the 42, but he coughed it up at the end. Could it be the fourth Iowa turnover of the half? It is another Hawkeye giveaway. Marshall Thomas, who had the fumble recovery for a touchdown, got it again. Well, we just mentioned they had no takeaways the last couple of games. Wager is a true freshman. The ball is out. Pops out. The first, the first defensive guy holds him, and the second Ooh. guy goes for the football. I don't know, Bob. That left knee might have been down before the ball came out. Let's take a look. Well, hard to tell from that angle. But the initial angle, it appeared as if maybe that left knee was down. Northwestern's going to try to snap it quickly before the technical advisor signals downstairs. And it doesn't matter now. Hersa in trouble, gets out of there, and dives to the 36. Well, every play in college is reviewed, okay? And if the coach wants to take a, 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 a want them to take a look at it, he can throw a flag. He can ask him to take a look. They have that right in college football. They got one. A request to review the place. And if you win that challenge, you get to keep it. And usually the uh, technical advisor will signal down that they're going to take more time to look at it as Concanon is thrown aside by Christian Ballard. All right, back to our athletic trivia question. Which former Hawkeye holds the NFL career record for most interceptions? Wh who do you think it is? Paul Krause. Paul Krause. He's, in, right. the, uh, he's in, in the NFL Hall of Fame, you know. 81 interceptions. 81. The guy had 12 in one year. And he, all, he would play free safety. He'd sit back in the middle of the field and just read your eyes. Just similar to what the Iowa Hawkeyes defensive safeties do now. Just sit back there, read your eyes. Here's Persa on third and five. Finds Sidney Stewart for the Wildcat first down. You can see the confidence mounting. Yes. For this Northwestern team behind backup quarterback Dan Persa. And I think Pat Fitzgerald did a smart thing starting Kafka getting Kafka into the ball game and then slowly getting Persa in there his confidence is building the Kafka with that left hamstring injury very limited Persa little freeze option and going in zone and it's intercepted picked off by Joe Conklin the first Northwestern turnover of the game. Well, another Iowa safety 
makes an interception. We're talking about Paul Krause being a Hawkeye. This was a bad throw. Double coverage. That's Conklin, number 20, with his first interception. The other two safeties have nine, so that's 10 interceptions this year for safeties for Iowa. And fitting for the story of today's game, Conklin, a backup. Former walk-on playing because of an injury to Brett Greenwood. You got two backup quarterbacks and now a backup safety making a play. So it comes out to the 20 and the touchback. And Vandenberg back under center. And Wager hit in the backfield. And does well to get back to the line as we check him with Reese. A lot of people think that if LSU wins that game, that they're right back in the driver's seat if it wins against Florida, the SEC championship, to play in the BCS championship. A lot of people, Bob, think that even if Iowa goes undefeated, that they will not play for the national title. How do you see it? I see that guy. They got, they got their hands <laughs> full 14, right 10, here. Yeah. They got their hands full here. And in two weeks on this field, they have Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So if they can win this one, Minnesota is the last one. And then in between, they have to go to Ohio State. Now, if, should they win all three, then they can start talking. Well, they'll have the Big Ten championship. Then they can start talking possible in the uh, national championship uh, picture. And normally you might say, no way, going to win at Ohio State. But they've won at Penn State. They've won at Michigan State. They've won at Wisconsin all this year. They are a good road team. Waker on second and 10. Gang tackled at the 23. Brad Phillips led the charge. And Northwestern takes a timeout. Pat Fitzgerald wants the football back. Third down coming up for Iowa. One in Columbus. Of course, the Hawkeyes, they're pulling for Penn State to beat Ohio State yep. because, of course, they went to Penn State, Iowa did, and beat them there. But if Ohio State wins out their last three games, yeah. they win the championship. The Big Ten go to the Rose Bowl, at least. If, if Iowa wins out to three games, they go to the Rose Bowl, at least. Maybe better. Iowa has not been to the Rose Bowl since the 1990-91 season. They were in a BCS Bowl earlier this decade playing in the Orange Bowl in 2003. Wager on third down. Great open field tackle. Play made by David Arnold. Otherwise, Wager probably picks it up. And now Iowa will have to punt the ball. I think both of these teams are, are kind of a little shell-shocked, and they're just staggering and wanting to get to halftime to get in there and regroup. Western out of timeouts, but Wildcats will get the ball back. Donahue, one of the best punters in the country. Andrew Brewer back to receive. Seven on the play clock, so Northwestern will get it with about 15 to 20 seconds remaining. And this is a huge kick. That's going to go all the way into the end zone. Yeah, no, he 73 did, yard punt. He did have a little win behind him. Not, not as strong as there was here last year. Last week, I mean, against Indiana. 73 yard punt. It'll come out to the 20. Northwestern may just take a knee. Here are the remaining three games for the top three teams in the Big Ten. You would think that Ohio State would have the toughest route playing at Penn State and at arch rival Michigan and then home against Iowa next week. Although Michigan after that win against Notre Dame everybody was talking about it their only win in conference is against Indiana but that's a rivalry game of course and it's in Ann Arbor. Kirk Ferentz and the Iowa Hawkeyes do they have another comeback left in them they've trailed in every game but one. And they're down again at halftime, 14-10 to Northwestern, and maybe they've lost their starting quarterback. Now, let's join Reese Davis for the Bud Light Halftime Report. Iowa has weathered injury after injury this season, but Ricky Stanzi goes down, leaves the game. Northwestern got a touchdown. Can the Hawkeyes remain perfect without their leader? Welcome back to ESPN's College Football presented by Cars.com. Can the Iowa Hawkeyes do it again? They trail in a game for the ninth time this year. They are 9-0 in the season. They trailed entering the fourth quarter four times and won all four. They'll start on defense here in the third quarter. 
as Simmons is taken down short of the 20 yard line by Jeff Tarpinian. Well, we asked the question, Bob, can Iowa do it again? It, it appears, even though Iowa is not telling us what the injury is to Ricky Stanzi, it appears that they're going to have to do it with their backup quarterback. Exactly. You know, and Iowa has been a second half team all year long. They've come from behind, and who knows? Vandenberg may be the guy. He may step up and be the next player in, and that's the philosophy at Iowa. Whoever gets hurt, next guy in, step up and play and do well. Northwestern backup quarterback getting the bulk of the work Dan Persa because of the injury to Mike Kafka he throws incomplete there trying for Andrew Brewer his injury to Stanzi on the fumble recovery for a touchdown that changed momentum yeah it's the lower right leg probably the ankle area Stanzi went out did not come back so it's the next guy in. I mean, how many guys in the country, how many teams in the country do you know with two solid quarters? We're finding out one, one right here in Dan Persa. And Concana, not much. Persa is the story of the first half. Yep. After you talk about uh, Stanzi getting hurt, Persa came in, he threw a touchdown pass, and he rushed for 57 yards, which is by far the most of anybody on the uh, Wildcat team. And to your point, look at Oklahoma and what happened when Sam Bradford went down. Third and eight for Northwestern. Wildcats have won the last two times they play here in Iowa City. Bursa with time, and he's got a man. First down, Northwestern. Andrew Brewer pulls it in. Last week, Kafka got hurt in the second quarter. Dan Persa came in, played the rest of the ball game. Had some good plays, had some bad plays. There's Kafka, and we haven't seen him in uh, like four or five series now. It's been all Persa. But Persa, as we said earlier, was the Pennsylvania player of the year, his senior year. So this kid got, got some moxie. Quick pitch to Con Cannon looking for a hole, and he finds it brought down by Hunter after a gain of six. All 14 points for Northwestern off of turnovers. Four Iowa turnovers and a lost quarterback. And that after a great start, they scored a touchdown in the opening minute. Yeah, they, uh, they were up 10 points, first two possessions. There's Simmons fighting for extra yardage close to the first down marker. You know, the other thing about Northwestern last week, uh, this is a similar score right now to that game with Penn State. The Wildcats led that game at halftime 13 to 10. They were tied going into the fourth quarter. And then Penn State scored three touchdowns in three minutes. So Pat Fitzgerald well aware that this game is far from over. Third down and short. Persa on the sneak. And Iowa just got whipped up front that time by Northwestern's offensive line. But going back to last week, would you say about the Penn State game, Northwestern, Northwestern lost their quarterback, and then Persa had to come in. Now it's a different, the shoe's on the other foot. Iowa has lost their quarterback, and another quarterback has to step up and get it done. And you have to think that experience against Penn State last week helped Persa. No question. Persa getting out of trouble again. To the outside. Right at the first down marker. He is giving Iowa's defense all kinds of problems. And again, a lot of teams would be in nickel against this Northwestern offense, but not Iowa. Well, there's only about five or six guys around him because everybody is spread from sideline to sideline. All the black shirts, all the Iowa Hawkeyes, defensive guys are spread out. So there's a lot of holes for him to dart through and make some yardage. And a lot of the faster guys for Iowa who would normally come in a nickel on another team aren't playing. So you got some of those linebackers who may not run as well as defensive backs out there in their base defense as that pass may have been deflected at the line. It'll bring up second down and 10. But if you're Iowa, you don't change what you are defensively. Oh, no. You, you, you do what you do. And, you know, it, it, I mean, Northwestern's only scored one touchdown against your guys. The other one was an, an offensive fumble in the end zone. Here's a blitz. And 
Carson with nowhere to go because Eads was coming in and he made the play along with Ballard, a rare Iowa blitz. <laughs> you, you got that right. I mean, you talk about the sacks for the Iowa Hawkeyes. 17 of the 18 sacks are by defensive linemen. Those linebackers don't blitz very often. Northwestern in the top 10 nationally in third down conversions. They started 0 for 4, but they've converted their last five third downs. No linebackers in the middle of the formation. But the middle of the field is covered, and Persa gets hammered by Claiborne. What Iowa does is they send those linebackers out to run with these, just, just run with them, just stay close to them. A person's helmet taken off by Claiborne, no penalty flag go. Look down the field. Person's already ejecting by the time. That's just good pursuit, that active defensive line. Demos punt fielded by Sash, dangerous play. And he's out across the 25. Iowa's defense comes up with a stop, the sack on Persa. What will the offense do for the Hawkeyes? Come back and find out. Dan Persa trying to end Iowa's dream season. Right now, he and the Wildcats lead the Hawkeyes by four. Iowa at 9-0, fourth in the BCS standings. The computers have them at number two. The coaches poll at number six. The Harris poll at number seven. Those three account for one-third of the totals each as that pass is caught by Strauss, gain of about six. They have not thrown to their outstanding tight end, Tony Moyaki at all in this game. Yeah, I think, you know, they, they kind of gotten into a last week, the big plays with uh, Johnson, Koulianis, and McNutt, and uh, Strauss. You know, sometimes it takes a little bit more for that tight end to get open because he's in the middle of the field running around all those linebackers. Plus, uh, you've got a backup quarterback in there, James Vandenberg, after Stanzi's injury in the second quarter. Vandenberg's first action since September 12th. And that'll help him out. Wager on the carry. Iowa averaged about two yards a rush in the first half. They get four or five there. Now, Vandenberg, during this week, I mean, they didn't know that Stanzi was going to get hurt, okay? So Stanzi would probably take about 65, 70% of the reps of the plays in practice, the ones they were going to run in the ball game, And Vandenberg would probably get the other 25 or 30%. Uh, so he's run some of these plays. There's uh, Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator, who's calling the plays. He's trying to give him some good plays that he can get some confidence in. Vandenberg will throw. And he puts that one on the money to McNutt, who juggled it and hung on for the first down. He's got a strong arm. There's no doubt about that. He can throw to the outsides, and that's what he has done most of the time when he's thrown it. Good protection, great protection. And a 17-yard pass play. Well, so far, Cincinnati has been able to overcome the loss of Tony Pike, although he could be back. Polaris has played well. And now Vandenberg getting his opportunity to try to keep an undefeated season alive as the backup quarterback for the Hawkeyes. Wager, true freshman running back. And he gets about two. Corbin Bryant plugging that hole. It's been a storied ride so far for the Hawkeyes. 9-0, and they've been, like you said, they've been down in every ball game at halftime. Down in every ball game, nine of the ten they've been behind, they've come back, and it's been a different guy a lot of the different times, and here you go. Vanderberg's turn, step up, let's get it done. And we just got a word from uh, the Hawkeye locker room. It is an ankle sprain. Doubtful return for Ricky Stanzi. So Vandenberg trying to get some confidence here, second and eight from the 41. It's a right ankle injury for Stanzi as Vandenberg dumps it off to Johnson Kulianos. He had trouble pulling it in, but he eventually caught it and got an Iowa first down to the Northwestern 29, a gain of 20. Call by Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator. Spread it wide, five wide receivers, one side to the other, and then just kind of drug Johnson Kulianos across the formation. Easy throw, easy completion, and picked up a first down. 
Play action for Vandenberg. And that pass is dropped by Johnson Koulianos. Boy, Vandenberg had a guy right in his grill, and he still got that pass from the far hash mark all the way to the near sideline. Well, see, this is, I, I, think he, I think he could have pulled up a little bit. Yeah, he, really, he couldn't have done anything about that. You know, he did he did the best he could do there. He got it to him. Got yeah. to catch a ball. That's a strong arm right there. Vandenberg actually, since that interception where he threw it right to Quentin Davey, has looked pretty good. He's had only now two incompletions since then, and one of those was that drop he just saw. Yeah, they've kept him out of the middle of the field other than that crossing route, the shallow crossing route, where he got in trouble was deep down the field early in the ballgame interception. Vandenberg rolling out and throws that one away. Corey Wooten, who is finally healthy. The injury in the bowl game, ankle injury earlier this year, but Wooten, they think now finally at 100%. Yeah. His presence was felt in the first half when he took down Stancy in the end zone. He was one of our uh, players to watch. Came into the game with 17 sacks, four interceptions for a defensive end. That's a lot of interceptions in a career, even in a career. Great career he's had. 45 career starts for Northwestern. And NFL scouts salivating over the potential at six foot seven, 280 pounds of Corey Wooten. Iowa faced with a third and ten. Play clock at five as Vandenberg still has not got his offense set. It's down to one. We're not gonna... And Kirk Ferentz was down by the linesman calling for a timeout. Timeout. Iowa. So he wasn't aware. That's one thing you got a lot to do when you're a backup quarterback. You're in there thinking this, that, and that. That's the last thing you thought of. ESPN's College Football brought to you by GMC. We are professional grade. And Subway Restaurants. Watch this week's Subway Fresh Take video for a refreshing look at sports. Go to ESPN.com. Search Fresh Take. A great day to be outdoors, man or beast, here in Iowa City. Temperature around 70 degrees. Perfect weather for a perfect team, but how long will it last? Iowa at 9-0, trailing by four. Midway through the third, and backup quarterback James Vandenberg faced with a third down and 10. Going for it all, and it's overshot, trying for McNutt in the end zone. That was a good shot, and the good thing about it was he gave him a chance to catch it, and he threw it long away from the two defenders. He's got a strong arm. He got no problem with that. He just This kid just needs some experience, some game experience, but a kick a field goal. Daniel Murray's long is 48 yards. This will be from about 46. Made a 39-yarder earlier in the game. And he missed it wide to the left. It had plenty, plenty of leg, but he hooked it, and it missed left. Matt Fitzgerald looking into the sun there. <laughs> and his team trying to get bowl eligible with a win today, leading by four in decent field position after the missed field goal. Persa will keep, and Claiborne's got him and throws him aside. We've got two dominant defensive ends in this game, Claiborne and Wooten, and they are both playing really well. Claiborne has a sack. He's got seven and a half on the year. That's tied for second in the Big Ten. A guy that a lot of people thought would never play sports. He was born with something called Herb's palsy, which can cause nerve damage in the shoulder area. And doctors advised him never to play football. But he has. He hasn't had any shoulder problems, and he might be playing in the NFL one day. Here's Purse on the keeper. Trying to splatter the pile. Did a pretty good job. Got about three or four. Ballard there for Iowa. 
Well, Northwestern has won two straight games here. Do you buy into one team having another team's I do. number? I do. I do, because I've played enough football that, you know, sometimes we just went to somebody else's house and we were very confident that we were going to beat them. Other times, we I don't know whether it was a color, whether it was a, the insignia on the helmet or what it was, just didn't have a good feeling about it. Ursa on third and seven. Iowa blitzing. Ursa got drilled, and he still completed it for a first down at Brewer. <laughs> that was a great throw. Pat Anger smoked Kurt Apersa, and he still completed it. The middle linebacker coming from the outside, 43, untouched. Anger knocks him down. He's got to see him coming, but, but didn't care about it. Just wanted to get the ball out to Brewer. That's a big-time play. And Northwestern converts on third down and long. First a pitching to Con Cannon. Eads is there. And maybe a gain of one. If you just joined us, both teams are, are playing with their backup quarterbacks. So it's it's going to say, all right, you know, you took our quarterback out, we take your quarterback out, and we can see who the backups. So far, Persa has had the better part of it. He he came in last week for the first time, got a at least a good half of experience. Kafka got hurt last week, but did start this game. Here's Persa, that passed too low for Mark Sows, and incomplete. Another third and long coming up for Northwestern. Iowa controls its own destiny for the Big Ten race. Trying to win. Big Ten title for the first time since 1985. They shared it in 2002 and in 2004. And a Northwestern penalty here as the left tackle, Alan Netter, came up out of the stand. All start in the 75. Five-year penalty, still third down. And even if Iowa should end up losing this game, if they were to win in Columbus next week, they still would have the upper hand to win the Big Ten. Iowa can lose a game. The, and win the next win two games as long as they win the one next week against Ohio State if Ohio State beats Penn State later on today. Iowa defeated Penn State earlier this year plays at Ohio State ABC 330 Eastern next week. And purse has got to hurry up play clock down to three trying to change the play at the last second. And another Northwestern penalty yeah. this one for delay. They're trying to do too much from the sideline. They set their formation. They got five receivers, three to the right, two to the left, so everybody's spread out. There's no linebackers in the middle of the uh, formation. No linebackers in here. So from the sideline, they're probably trying to call a quarterback draw or something. But they just take too long to do it. Went from third and eight to third and 13, and now it's third and 18 after the delay. And he'll keep it on the ground. Not much for Simmons, but a penalty flag down. We'll see what it is. Carl Klug on the tackle. Chop block, offensive lineman. That's the third straight penalty against the Wildcats. Chop block, number 65, offense. That's a 15 yard penalty. So now it's going to be third and about 30. Why not, if you're Iowa, just decline it? It was fourth down. It was fourth down at about 15. Why not just get the ball back? Well, moving, you're, you're, gaining, you're gaining yardage. Your offense has not been doing so good, so now let your defense gain some yardage. Always take a risk, though, but you do, and you chances of Northwestern picking up third and 33, unlikely. Well, I, but the, it could be a defensive penalty. A defensive penalty, automatic first yeah. down. That's the only thing you don't you stay away from. Here's Con Cannon. And tackled at the 25. Northwestern will have to kick. Iowa at 9-0. Fourth in the BCS standings. They have won a school record four games by three points or less. And it appears we're headed for another close one here in Iowa City. They led this game 10-0. And lost their quarterback, Ricky Stanzi, to a right ankle injury. And Northwestern now with a lead. And a short punt. There's a penalty flag down. Yeah. 
You know, for two teams that have not been penalized very much, we've had a lot of flags today. There is no foul on the play. There's maybe there. Bring it down. First down. We couldn't hear Time Dennis out. Lipsky. will take his word for it. Iowa football when we come back. 19 straight wins overall. They've got the longest winning streak in the country. Iowa is number two at 13 in a row. And Cincinnati undefeated playing tonight against UConn. Vandenberg, redshirt freshman quarterback, taken down after a minimal gain. David Arnold catches up to him. Vandenberg was looking downfield that time. Yeah, there was nobody open and just a two-man route. Meanwhile, Dan Persa, his throwing hand, you can see, shaken up. And... Mike Kafka's got a bad hamstring, was warming up. Kafka started the game, but then Bursa oh, that wouldn't keep him got out. the bulk of the snaps. You know they go to keep him out? Oh, a few scratches. These quarterbacks are tough. <laughs> well, Kafka was warming up. We'll see. Got some time to heal with Iowa having the football. Here's the end around. Freshman Keenan Davis, Northwestern, not fool. Let's check in with the Reese. South Carolina trying to get its seventh win of the season. That's who Iowa beat in the Outback Bowl last year to get win number nine. Third down and eight for the Hawkeyes, and Dan Perso was last seen walking away from the Northwestern bench, which means if it's a three and out, we're going to see Kafka. Vandenberg got level and underthrew it. Quinton Davey coming for Northwestern. And Persa is going back to the Northwestern locker room. He got that right hand tape. Yeah, he'll be back. Northwestern coming with an all-out blitz. Didn't allow Vandenberg a lot of time to throw. Three and out. Three and punt. Andrew Brewer back. Donahue, one of the nation's best, takes the low snap. Takes that one up there. Brewer. They're caught inside the 20. Iowa. Trying to stay unbeaten. Niall Kinnick, one of America's heroes, the uh, stadium named after him. Former Heisman Trophy winner and just short of his 25th birthday while serving in World War II during a routine training flight, he was killed. And they named the stadium after him in 1972. One of the youngest, and may be the youngest, to ever have any kind of sporting facility named after him. Passing away just shy of his 25th birthday. ESPN will be supporting Veterans Day, which is Wednesday, all week. And you saw game day this morning from Air Force. Tom Cannon knocked down by the safety Tyler Sash for no gain on first down. Iowa's last loss at home was to Northwestern. In fact, the Wildcats, the only team to win in Iowa City twice in the last seven years. They got five takeaways in their win last year and their win in 06. That was the first for Pat Fitzgerald as a head coach. First Big Ten win. That pass pulled in beautifully by Stewart, thrown in between two defenders by Mike Kafka, who's out there battling that left hamstring problem. Yeah, good catch. Gets inside the cornerback. Well, that's Subave on the coverage. Third and short. Third and short. Quarterback sneak, and Kafka appears to have it. It is a Northwestern first down. That'll be the longest run for him today. Kafka. Yeah. And he can barely run. Hurt the hamstring last week. It all went downhill for Northwestern in the fourth quarter. They were tied with Penn State before the Nittany Lions broke loose. Meanwhile, Iowa was trailing in its game in the fourth quarter, and it went wild against Indiana. What does the fourth quarter hold for us today as Ebert catches that out of bounds at the 35? Here's the entry to Kafka against Penn State last week. Right there where he is in the middle of the pocket. He just tried to push off and has grabbed his lower left leg, his hamstring area. And that's uh, 
Everybody that's played quarterback has probably done that once or twice in their career. They were leading 10-3 at that point when he got hurt. And pass broken up there. But the flag comes in. Prater interfering with Sidney Stewart. It'll be a first down. Outside. Good call. Pass interference. Number 28. Defense. Spot foul. Automatic. First down. When Persa was in quarterback for Northwestern for about three or four or five series, it was predominantly run in a few passes. When you have Kafka back in there now, it's mainly pass and not very many runs, especially by him. They're going empty here. So if anybody's going to run, it's going to be him. But Kafka to throw. And Claiborne chasing. And Kafka got rid of it at the last second. It's, and his arm was going forward as he was hit. It's really a shame. All the film, the tape we've watched, you see Kafka. He's a magician back there. He can get away. He takes off running, but now he knows he can't can't get in. He can't run. He, 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 you're just seeing you're seeing a guy back there that's a passer only. But uh, this guy came in leading the uh, Wildcats in passing and rushing. He had rushed for 421 yards. He's the Big Ten's leading passer. Hands off here to Con Cannon. He's had a good day, and he gets five more. We'll bring up third down. Northwestern coming into today, leading the country in the number of third down conversions. And they've been pretty good the last couple of quarters after an 0 for 4 start. Kafka, man open, first down, Northwestern. Pulled in by Dunsmore, or Dunsmore, who had the touchdown earlier in this ball game for Northwestern. I'll tell you what, he steps into this when the hamstring does not seem to be affecting his throwing. It's so a left hamstring. If it would have been the right one, it would have been bothering him a little bit, throwing the football, but uh, he's throwing it well here today. Well, each school last week involved in a wild fourth quarter. Northwestern on the losing end, Iowa on the winning end. What will happen today with everything at stake for Iowa? Big Ten championship possibly, even a BCS championship possibly at stake. Well, some would say Iowa has Northwestern right where they want them. The Hawkeyes down for the fifth time in 10 games entering the fourth quarter. They've won the previous four. They're fourth in the BCS standings. Everything at stake in this one against the Wildcats. Mike Kafka fires to Brewer complete. And near the first down marker. Iowa was down last week here at home to Indiana in the fourth and then put up 28 fourth quarter points. Win that game going away, and then the big win on the road at Michigan State on a last-minute touchdown on fourth down. And how about the Northern Iowa game? That was, they blocked oh, yeah. two field goals yeah. at the end of the game. They, they Successive they field goal attempts. They don't want to make anything easy. That was the first game of the year. Here's Concanon up second and short, and good job by the Hawkeye defense, Sean Prater and Daniels for Iowa. Watch the he hand hit the helmet right there. That's Dan Persa. The, the hand hit the helmet. You can see his hand. Knuckles are bleeding. Shake the test in his hand. His return doubtful according to Northwestern officials. So Mike Kafka, who started the game, but is battling a hamstring injury, might be the guy the rest of the way. Meanwhile, Iowa playing its backup quarterback because of an injury to Ricky Stanzi. Kafka is normally the starter. But Persa played well when he was out there today. He did. He uh, one, two, three, four. He played in four series by himself, and then two other series he kind of shared with Kafka. So he's taken the the uh, the heavy load today, and then now Kafka comes back in. He's well rested. He's going to make some throws. 11th play of the drive. He picked up the first down. Kafka will throw here on first down. Going to the sideline and well overthrown, intended for Zeke Markshausen. 
Again, a linebacker covering a receiver as A.J. Eads was step for step with Mark Sauser. <laughs> How about a linebacker covering the, 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 the leader in receptions in the Big Ten and the second and second in the nation at 67 receptions and Eads was right there with him. Eads and Anger. Believe it or not, are the only two senior starters on defense. Iowa next year will have just about everybody back on both sides of the ball. They have 18 starters back, including the two kickers. Kafka in trouble, his arm hit. And ruled an incompletion. Carl Klug with the hit. There's an immediate recovery. That's why you saw the players diving on the ball, because on that attempt there by Kafka, they can review that to determine whether it was a fumble, because if there's a fumble and an immediate recovery, they can overturn the ruling in the field if there is indisputable video evidence. We'll see if they'll take another look at that or not. I think they ruled it was a forward pass. His arm was going forward. It doesn't look like they're going to stop it here. And Kirk Ferentz not going to use a challenge either. Play clock at two. Kafka on third and ten, going to the end zone, overthrown. Tried for Markshausen again. This time he had a corner on him, Sean Prater. Tight coverage all the way. It's third down, you're going to go to your, your playmaker at Markshausen and just overthrows it. Threw it high, gave him a lot of air, just couldn't get there. I mean, it was good coverage. And now Stefan Demos, who's only missed two field goals all year, and both of those were blocked, will try a 47-yard attempt. His long this year is 49. It has plenty of lag right down Main Street. And it's a seven-point Northwestern lead. But it remains a one-possession game here in Iowa City. If Northwestern hangs on, they'll be talking about this one for a while in Chicago. As you look at Ricky Stanzi, right ankle injury, and he's not going to return to this one. And Johnson Culliano's taking it out, and he'll get to the 19 as we check in with Reese. All right, Dave, I want to give you a little sense of what's going on in the family of networks on ABC, coverage of the Breeders' Cup will continue on the family of networks throughout the day. Of course, the Breeders' Cup Classic later this afternoon. Zenyatta facing the boys. My Met Bird, Summer Bird, both Triple Crown race winners. And over on ESPN2, under caution, it appears, NASCAR Nationwide Series at Texas, Kurt Busch is leading that race. We've got plenty of football to take care of here on ESPN, though, Dave. Yeah, a lot of people cautioning uh, those that are ready to jump on the Iowa bandwagon that they got to beat Northwestern as Johnson Culianos takes the uh, slam is out to the 25. I think there will be a lot more people cautioning people going forward depending on what happens here with Ricky Stanzi out and Iowa down by seven trying to keep that perfect season alive. Well aside from this game which they're behind and need to get some, something going. You know they had all this theatrics in the past but is next week they have to go to Ohio State and try to beat Ohio State with the backup quarterback. Now one freshman quarterback's already won in Columbus, but that's Matt Barkley at USC. James Vandenberg not as highly touted as Barkley. The redshirt freshman Vandenberg handing off here to true freshman Brandon Wager. This is the entry to Stanzi on a play that was a Northwestern touchdown on a fumble recovery. And then Dan Persa, the Northwestern number two quarterback, but getting starters reps today because of Kafka being slowed by a left hamstring injury. There Stanzi hurts his right hand. Stanzi was in his own end zone. It was like a little bootleg trying to fool somebody. Wooten, the defensive end, was not fooled and just uh, ate him up. Big third down and short here for Iowa. Over two on third down and a half. Wager has the first down. An arm tackle by Maven. But the Hawkeyes will keep the football. Yeah, that was a big third down. Uh, the second half, in fact, the whole ball game. Iowa's run a lot fewer plays, 23 fewer plays than the Wildcats have run. That's Northwestern's M.O. They like to get on the field and stay on there with their offense. Vandenberg's first game since September 12th when he was in in mop-up duty against Iowa State. Only three pass attempts this season coming in. He's 6 of 12 in this game, including an interception. Wager gets stuck 
by Adam Hahn. No gain on the play. Yeah, this is tough for Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator on the sideline, calling the plays. You got a, a redshirt freshman who has not played very much. He's played a little bit in this ball game. He's a, the first pass that he threw, Vandenberg, was for an interception. Uh, he's kind of settled down. He's got a strong arm. They've thrown some long outs to the wide side of the field. And this thing's down the sideline. They just need to hit a big one here to one of those uh, Johnson, Culianos, or McNutt. Similar to what happened last week. All right, everybody here in the stadium is looking for that. And McNutt had a 74-yard touchdown pass on the third play of this game. Vandenberg hit. And it's incomplete as we check in with Reese. What a turnaround for Purdue, uh, wow. Bob, after that tough start to the season. Yeah. Big win against Ohio State, and then they went up to Wisconsin, got snooker. And despite that, though, the Boilermakers had a nice uh, comeback after that slow start. Vandenberg here on third down and long, being chased, and throws it away. Just that was good. a first pass that was anywhere near the tight end Tony Moyaki. Yeah. First time we've even seen the quarterback look his way today. And, and he wasn't open. They, they're doing a nice job of staying with Moyaki. No catches, and that's, again, the first one that was even close to him, and I think Vandenberg was just throwing it away. Donahue will boot it away. And Brewer back to receive. Brewer fielding it at the 22-yard line, pushed out at the 28 by Jeff Tarpinian. Iowa's undefeated season at stake, along with the nation's second longest current winning streak. Florida has the longest at 18, and the Gators will be on ESPN2 tonight. Playing Vanderbilt, Iowa's won 13 straight. Texas going up against UCF right now, and the Longhorns leading that game, and they've won their last 12. Now, a lot has to happen for Iowa to win their last three games and play for a BCS championship. But if they do, they're in the conversation. First things first, Kirk Ferentz said, hey, the way we are, we're not an elite team. Yeah. We, we can't look ahead. Yeah. And they got their work cut out from here in the fourth quarter down seven. Northwestern trying to run some clock. Cut Cannon picks up about four, brought down by Clue. Push Northwestern. They need one game to qualify for a bowl game. What a job Pat Fitzgerald's done here, huh? He's done a great job. I was talking to him before the ball game. Uh, it's his fourth year, and um, he said, he "said when I when I came, when I was here and took over the job, this offense was like this, and I wanted to keep this." Kafka finds Schmidt out of the backfield, close to a first down. Wanted to keep the up tempo, no huddle. So as he hired offensive coordinators over the years, that's the kind of style that he wanted. Fitzgerald was an assistant on Randy Walker's staff. Walker passed away suddenly, and Fitzgerald, a former Wildcat linebacker, got the job and led him to a nine-win season a year ago, trying to get to six and four, and even their Big Ten record at three and three here today as Kafka had to dump it off find Stewart. And he's out of bounds at the 41, a gain of four. Fitzgerald on the coverage. He says, we've had a chance to win every game. We've been in every game. And it takes time to build. You know, it's very similar to what, what uh, Ferentz has done here at Iowa. They don't get the five-star, the four-star recruits. They have to go out and get guys that are not on the size chart, a little undersized, a little underweight. And Northwestern has had a lead in the fourth quarter in every game this year but one. And they've got it again today. Second down and seven. And Simmons leveled by Christian Ballard. It will bring up third down and long, a loss of one on the play. Well, Iowa leads the nation in interceptions with 18, and the majority of those have come on third down and in the fourth quarter. So their offense is not doing a lot here and they their offense needs some help and an interception might be just what they need Kafka with time he's got Markshausen trying to head for the first down marker and Spivet, Spivet may have kept him from getting the first down it's spotted a yard short if you're Northwestern, do you take a chance here or do you just kick it deep? 
fourth and one. Well, young coach, but let me tell you this. If you don't make it, you got a short field for a play. For, go ahead and punt it and give them to the backup quarterback. And it looks like an excellent spot there. It's where the ball is, and it was in his left arm, and he was short. And now they're going to take Kafka. And there was a timeout called by Northwestern before the sneak. They called a timeout, and they got the first down. Timeout, Northwestern, first charge, timeout. They, they went with yeah. Kafka under center and the sneak on fourth down and one, and they had it. But the Wildcats call the timeout first. Will they go for it now, or will they kick it on fourth down? Come back and find out. Presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. Northwestern trying to break Iowa for the first time this year. The Hawkeyes undefeated. Here's the fourth down and one. And Pat Fitzgerald calling for timeout there. And now they're going to punt. They had set up to go for it, and actually Kafka would have had it. I think I think this is the smarter play because Iowa has not done anything offensively in the second half. Put them down. If you don't make it, you give them the ball inside your own 50-yard line. Sash to receive, and he gets taken down at the 17. Well, we talked with Coach Ferentz yesterday about the BCS championship possibilities. The picture will be a lot more clear uh, in a couple of weeks, you know, three, four weeks. Hopefully we're part of the discussion. We'll see how that goes. And uh, I'm going to share, I'm not worried too much about it right now. I think for the most part, you get what you deserve in life and in sports too. It's not always true. I understand that. But, uh, uh, you know, if we have a chance to, to weigh in on the debate in, in a month, that'd be great. Right now, I'm not worried about it. I'm just worried about us uh, playing well against Northwestern. And looking at the score, you could understand why he'd make that comment leading into the game. He said, originally, when he looked at the schedule at the beginning of the year, he said, you know, I, I think we can win any game, and I think we can lose any game. And uh, he's been pretty close on that. So Iowa takes over, trailing by seven. A run waiver on first down. And a good open field tackle by Maven after a gain of a handful. And he also said we could be we could be four and four, four and five as easily as we could be nine and oh. So I mean these coaches know. I mean if we're looking in from the outside, they know more than we know. They know that that they're kind of thin at the running back position. They they know that they're they're punt they've got a couple of guys hurt on the punt return. They know they know where their weaknesses are, where their warts are. And um, so They've been lucky to win some of these ball games, but they'll take them. They've, they've lost some in the past that they should have won, maybe. His words yesterday were, we're not an elite team. As that pass is in the dirt by Vandenberg trying to hit Johnson Koulianos as we hit Reese Davis up for another. Not good for the Mason Blue. Now Michigan in danger of falling to one and five in Big Ten play. Timeout. Iowa, second charge. Timeout. Uh, Hawkeyes will have just one Timeout remaining. Timeout. Even if Iowa comes back to win this game, Bob, let's talk big picture here. They still got to go to Ohio State. They still got to play Minnesota. So even if they end up winning their last three, and that's a big if right now, it, it's hard to imagine if, if Texas doesn't lose. Yeah. It's hard to imagine Iowa playing for oh, BCS. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. But more to the point, uh, if they lose this ball game, or maybe if they come back and win, they're going to have trouble next week at Ohio State with a backup quarterback yeah. because Stanzi was up and down hot and cold and everything else but he was a heck of a player when he was hot Vandenberg you know is the first guy first time he's played in the college level now he's going to go to Ohio State and try to win with him now it can be done but it's going to be a lot tougher than it would have been before the injury here are the BCS standings Texas leapfrogging Alabama this week Iowa currently at number four Third down and six for James Vandenberg, the backup Iowa quarterback. And Johnson Kuliano's going down to make a catch and a Hawkeye first down. That'll help Vandenberg's confidence. Well, that was, yeah, it was, a, it was a good, it was a catch and it's a first down, but it's a little bit low. Oh, great grab, yeah. huh? Shoelace grab and securing it after he hit the ground. We have not had any further reviews today. Every play reviewed in college football. But no stoppages as Vandenberg might get stopped in the backfield. And then good job to get rid of it and throw it away. Crowd wants a late hit in the backfield, but no penalty. Vince Brown 
Got to Vandenberg at the last second. Good pressure by the Wildcats. Nice scramble and nice eject. Oh, and, and they. No, wait I minute. think they got a point there. He took three or four steps and ran into him after the, the pass he, was released. He kind of let up. He kind of let up. He didn't knock him. I think if he, I think if he would have really hit him hard. What you, how how is a defensive guy go to slow down? I mean, you can't anticipate slowing down and then the guy doesn't throw the ball. I'm talking about these defense. I'm I'm going on the <laughs> defensive side this week. <laughs> Wonder if Spielman's marking this down. That's <laughs> As that pass is zipped in there by Vandenberg again to Johnson Culianos, an Iowa first down across the 40. Because the Hawkeyes beat the Nittany Lions and have to go to Ohio State next week. That's the first impressive pass that Vandenberg has thrown in a while. Run, run. Running play, Wager. Met at the point of attack, Brad Phillips there for Northwestern. Minimal game. Brad Phillips is uh, one of the leaders on that team. Quarterback in high school switched over. Talking to uh, Mike Hankwitz before the ball game. He says, we were in great shape before the season with safeties. Now we've got Brandon Smith. He's not playing today. We moved a couple of them to linebacker. They're dinged up a little bit. They've had some injuries in that secondary. They've had injuries everywhere. Yeah, started 20 different players on defense. Yeah. Nine in the secondary this year. And they've held Iowa to 10 points, and those came in the opening five minutes. Vandenberg. And he throws it away again. So another third down and long coming up for Iowa. Are you in four down? territory yet if you're the Hawkeyes or no too well, early well there's five minutes and 20 seconds left you only have one timeout so your stoppages are going to be limited one of the things that might help you is that Northwestern gets up there and snaps the ball so quickly they don't take a lot of time off the clock when they're well, offense. well they would if if they if they're trying to run out the clock they may get up to the line of scrimmage but they won't snap it until the uh, clock runs down to two or three you got single coverage out here on the outside. Northwestern blitzing. Vandenberg stepping up, going deep. He's got Johnson Cooleyanos, but he overthrew him. And he had him at the 20 yard line. Couldn't hit him. That reminded me of what happened here last week. Big plays at the end of the ball game. He had him beat. Johnson Cooleyanos, he just didn't get him the ball. Fourth down, and Iowa will punt the ball. Andrew Brewer back to receive. Donahue hangs that one up there beautifully. It's fair caught at the 18. Kirk Ferentz hoping for some more Hawkeye magic to keep their undefeated season alive. They're down seven, though. A perfect season, perhaps, on the brink. Northwestern trying to hand Iowa its first loss of the year. Wildcats football leading by a touchdown. Concannon on first down, doesn't get much. Wrapped up by Tyler Sash. Only one timeout remaining for Iowa, and the clock at 4.55 and counting. There's one thing that the uh, Wildcats cannot do right now, and that is turn the ball over. No interceptions, no fumbles, and run the clock all the way down. Run this little clock right here, the play clock, all the way down. Does this hurt Northwestern because this is not what they normally do, or does it matter? Doesn't matter. Okay. Doesn't matter. Bill. He's looking right into that sun. I don't know if he can see the play clock. I'm sure he can. It's, it's pretty high. Play clock is at two right now. Another handoff on Cannon. He spins out of one tackle. It'll be very close to a first down. All depends on the spot, whether it's third and short or first down. Usually our uh, yellow line is very accurate, and it is a first down. Big broken tackle by sophomore running back at 5'10", 190, and that's generous, generous for uh, Scott Concanon. Yeah, that's a huge first down. First downs for Northwestern, that's all they need right now. Only one timeout left for Iowa.
You would think at this point, even if they don't get the first down and they have to kick it, there's going to be two minutes on the clock when Iowa gets it back. And as uh, Schmidt is stood up at the line of scrimmage by Pat Anger. Looking back at our Liberty Mutual drive recap, this is Dan Persa, the backup quarterback who was playing because of Kafka's hamstring injury. Simmons picking up third down and then the touchdown pass by Persa to Drake Dunsmore to give Northwestern the lead. Their other touchdown coming on a sack fumble recovery by Marshall Thomas, sacked by Corey Wooten in the end zone that not only gave the Wildcats their first points, but knocked quarterback Ricky Stanzi out of the game for good. Second and eight. It'll bring up third down and long. Maybe a yard for Schmidt. We'll see if Iowa calls a timeout here, holds on to it. Really an unusual game, Dave, when both teams had to use both of their quarterbacks. So we've had four quarterbacks play in this ball game, and the two that played for Northwestern have done much better than the two that played for Iowa. And Versa, likely done for the day. We know that Stancy is out for the day. And this is really the ball game right here, third and six for Northwestern. Undefeated season, perhaps a Big Ten championship all at stake here on this third down and six. Seattle. The Wildcats take a timeout, taking the play clock down to one. Yeah. Northwestern, second charge, timeout. I don't know why. I, I always got one timeout. I don't see, I understand why you don't use that right. as soon as you can because that time that ran off the clock, when you're not using your timeout, you can never get that back. If you take a timeout immediately, something may happen that you get the ball back and you never have those seconds that you let go. Let's check in with Reese Davis now in the studio. Underrated players in college football. Meanwhile, Northwestern with a third down and six. Look at what Iowa's done defensively in the second half this year. Doing a good job again, but just no offense for the Hawkeyes. They need the ball back. They've got only one timeout. But the chances of Con Cannon running this ball are pretty good. It'll be Con Cannon, and he's not going to get the first down. Actually, Schmidt is the ball carrier. Now Iowa will use its final timeout. And should have about two minutes plus with the football and an opportunity to come down to football and pro football hall of fame as a quarterback if you are a redshirt freshman james vandenberg who's thrown three passes all year prior to this game and you're going to get an opportunity to go down and tie the game or maybe lose it and end an undefeated season what are you thinking i would want the coach to call the plays for me that i do best if, if it's getting out the pocket get me outside the pocket if it's throwing out routes throw give me those if it's throwing short if it's throwing deep give me some easy stuff give me some screens they do not have any timeouts remaining as he most just got that kick away and it's sash at the 30 yard line flag down sash taken down at the 45 but it's likely going to come back During the return, illegal block at the back, number 34 on the receiving team. That's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Now, against Michigan State, they had to go 70 yards in the final minutes to win that game on fourth down and give Kirk Ferentz another road victory. Can the Hawkeyes do it again to tie the game? They've got to go about 83 yards on this drive with no timeouts and a redshirt freshman backup quarterback at the helm. That's all they have to do. But nothing's come easy for Iowa all year, so why should this be a surprise that they're in this position? Okay. Vandenberg with time. Try to dump it off, and it's nearly picked off. That would have won the game, but Davey, who intercepted Vandenberg earlier, yep. could not hang on to that one. Vandenberg was looking downfield, moved up in the pocket, and then he saw the guy coming across, and he just threw it too hard. You know, when you're that close to Strauss, you just got to give him a little softball. 
Again, no timeouts for Iowa. Clock would stop for the red until the ready for play on a first down. Vandenberg, everybody covered. And Vandenberg trying to create some space. Now he's going to run and head out of bounds at the 25. Good decision. Got about eight yards. And he stopped the clock. He's going to learn from this experience. Vandenberg, when he watches the film of this game for next week, if he has to play against Ohio State over there, he's going to learn from all these experiences. He scrambled around. He saw he only had a three-man rush. So you think right away, well, I'm going to have some extra time. Just move around in the pocket. I'm going to have extra time. The guys it's going to take may take him a little bit longer to get open because there's eight guys in the secondary. So he had a guy open. He just didn't see him. Third and two. Again, a three-man rush. Vandenberg waiting. There was some contact downfield, but no flag. McNutt and Maven got tangled up. And Iowa down perhaps to its final play here in what has been a perfect season at this point. Take a look from behind. Pass protection. Pretty good look from the left side. Looks like he's holding on to him. Ricky stands. He can't believe that there wasn't a penalty play. Fourth down and two. This is the ball game and perhaps a perfect season for Iowa and maybe a Big Ten championship as well. Vandenberg has a man. First down. Hawkeyes across the 32. It's Strauss and the clock will stop for the moment until the ready for play signal. One thirty seven and counting. No timeouts left. And he tried to hit McNutt down the sideline. Again, there was contact with Maven, but no flag. And it looked like legitimate contact before the ball was in the air. Vandenberg going to the sideline to get some information. These guys don't have uh, receivers in their helmets like they do in the NFL. Maybe they should have one. We can talk to him. He's a lot easier. Tell him. And watch for the linebacker blitz. Remember, hit the slant. If he blitz, this, that, do it. <laughs> Vandenberg on second and ten. Again, has time. And trying for Moiaki. Incomplete. First time. Moiaki's even had his hands on a football. Now it's third and ten. Yeah, they've locked on to Moyaki pretty good today. He came in with 23 catches, four touchdowns. 81 up to the right of your screen. Hey, they were locked on to him there. Should yeah. have been holding interference on yeah. David Arnold. Right. Had a hold of the back of his jersey. No flag. It's third and ten. Northwestern with a win will be bowl eligible. Iowa with a loss, still alive for a Big Ten title, but their undefeated season and dreams of a BCS title possibly would come to an end as that pass downfield is tipped and incomplete. Johnson Culianos down the seam, and it's fourth down and ten. McManus got a hand on it for Northwestern well, to they, break it up. They took a shot. Johnson Culianos, one of their quickest receivers. Vandenberg looked away and then came back. I mean, that's what you have to do. There's um, Mike Hankowitz, who's a defensive coordinator. Ken O'Keefe, the offensive guy on the other side. Fourth down and 10. Vandenberg stepping up, in trouble, gets rid of it incomplete. Northwestern takes over on downs, and there will be just six undefeated teams left in college football. We said coming in that Northwestern had won the three of the last four games and the last two games here on this field between these two teams. It looked in the first five minutes of the game like it might be an Iowa blowout. It was 10-0 as 
Kafka takes a knee. He'll have to do it one more time. But then Stanzi got hurt on a sack. He fumbled the ball in the end zone. It was recovered for a Northwestern touchdown. That changed the game, not just because of the score, but also Stanzi was knocked out because of injury. And the Hawkeyes were never the same. Well, Vandenberg, the rest of the way, went 9 of 27 for 82 yards and an interception. One more snap of the football for Northwestern. Kafka takes a knee, and Northwestern ends Iowa's dream season. The Hawkeyes lose for the first time. Marshall Thomas, today's outstanding player of the game, brought to you by REMAX. Two fumble recoveries, including the one in the end zone for the touchdown, as Pat Fitzgerald and Northwestern gets bowl eligible. But more importantly, another undefeated goes down in college football. Iowa still with a shot at a Big Ten championship, but a lot of work to be done having to go to Columbus next week before wrapping up the regular season at home against Minnesota. Ohio State will play Penn State coming up next over on ABC. Northwestern for the third time in four years wins at Kinnick Stadium 17 to 10 the final. For Bob Greasy and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Dave Pash. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. ESPN College Football Scoreboard is up next. Iowa loses for the first time this year. 17-10, the Hawkeyes fall to Northwestern. So long from Iowa City.